It is time now for the Mule Train News Program on this Tuesday, September the 29th, 2015, brought to you today by the First Bank, along with Liao's Mexican Restaurant. Memorial Service for Everett Lee Reader 86 of Mule Shoe will be held at the Ellis Funeral Home Chapel here in Mule Shoe on Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock with Dr. Stacy Connor, pastor of First Baptist Church of Milshu, officiating. That memorial service is at Ellis Funeral Home Chapel here in Milshu. Everett Reader died on September the 7th in the emergency room of the Milshu Area Medical Center where he had been taken from his home at the Parkview Nursing Care Center. He was born December the 8th, 1928, here in Bailey County in the Fairview community to Harl and Hazel Reeder. He married Ellen V. Riddle, August the 18th, 1948, and he went to school at Fairview and Millshoe and worked at the Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association when it was known as just the REI in its early days of conception, and he was a lineman there. He moved to Martin, where he worked as a lineman for Cochrane Power and Light for many years. While there, he his three children, Ronnie, Cassandra, and Michael, were born. In 1974, he and his wife moved to College Station, and he went to work for Texas A&M as a safety instructor and for the REI companies across the South part of Texas and he worked and taught through the A&M system prisoners. He retired in 1991 and moved to Brownwood where he enjoyed fishing. Then in 2009 he moved back to Milshoe from Brownwood to live near his sister Mary Jo Burge. He is survived by two sons, Ronnie and Michael Reeder, and also his daughter, Cassandra Lindsay. Two sisters, Dorothy Bowers and Mary Jo Burge. Five grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren and many nieces and nephews. Please remember all of the family of Everett Reeder in your prayers. The last few years of his life, he had lived at the Parkview Nursing Care Center. The family ice, the memorials be sent to the Oneida Wagden Senior Citizen Center, Box 292, Muleshoe 79347. And you can go online and send sympathy messages to the Reader family at www.ellisfuneralhomes.com. And repeating, Everett Lee Reader, 86, of Muleshoe died on September the 7th at the Muleshoe Area Medical Center Emergency Room. And the memorial service will be at Ellis Funeral Home Chapel here in Millshoe Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Please remember all of the Reader family in your prayers. He was the brother of Mary Jo Burge of Millshoe. Lonnie Gibson, 70, of Lubbock, formerly of Muleshoe, and the brother of Mrs. Susan Kirby of Muleshoe, died about 10.30 Monday morning in Lubbock Hospital. He had fallen last Friday and had surgery at the hospital in Lubbock, and he did not recover from his injuries. He was 
the brother of Susan Kirby of Millshoe, and he owned and operated Lonnie's Photography here in Millshoe, and his wife Sue taught in the second grade at Dillman Elementary School when they lived here. Funeral services will be Thursday evening at 6 in the Hillcrest Funeral Home at 1305 Phelps Avenue in Littlefield. He joined the U.S. Navy when he turned 18 years of age and served our country for eight years. He was a professional photographer for 40 years, joining his mother, Awisha Pointer Guest. He married his wife, Beverly Sue Boston of Tulia, 35 years ago. Lonnie and Sue lived here in Millshoe until they moved in 1994. They came here soon after they married. He was born January 27, 1945. When they moved, he became the owner of the Brazos Valley Steak Ranch. Please remember all of the family of Lonnie Gibson in your prayers. And repeating, the funeral services will be held in Littlefield Thursday evening at 6 in the Hillcrest Funeral Home at 1305 Phelps Avenue there in Littlefield for Lonnie Gibson, 70 of Lubbock, formerly of Muleshoe, and the brother of Susan Kirby of Muleshoe. Eddie Adkins, 76 years of age, of the Metroplex, died Friday night. His wife was the former Wanda Riles, daughter of Mr. and Ms. Jack Riles of Muleshoe. Her mother just died this past summer. Funeral services for Eddie Adkins will be held on Wednesday afternoon at 2 in the Dell Angel Funeral Home Chapel in Grand Prairie with the graveside service at 3 o'clock at Grand Prairie Memorial Gardens. He served his community through countless projects, through Rotary Foundation, the Chamber of Commerce, Optimus International, the Art Council of Grand Prairie, and Toastmasters. He was a CPI, and he was a graduate in 1969 of the Texas Tech University and received a Bachelor of Business Administration degree in accounting. He loved to fish at Lake Palestine. He is survived by his wife, Wanda, the former Wanda Riles of Muleshoe, and they had been married for 50 years. He also is survived by three daughters and numerous grandchildren and great-grandchildren. He was preceded in death by his son, Leslie Adkins, who died in 1993. Please remember all of the family of Eddie Adkins in your prayers. And repeating, he died Friday at the age of 76 in the Metroplex. And the funeral is at Dell Angel Funeral Home Chapel in Grand Prairie, Wednesday afternoon at 2, and the graveside service at 3 at Grand Prairie Memorial Gardens. Buck Johnson is being brought home to Millshoe on Tuesday. Please remember, though, Buck Johnson and his wife Carolyn both in your prayers. Buck has been in University Medical Center in Lubbock. Buck Johnson is coming home from UMC in Lubbock on Tuesday. Emily Precure, daughter of Miss Miss Carol Precure, a Milshu High School student, 
will be among the students of Texas to be honored at the Texas Association of School Administrators and the Texas Association of School Boards Convention October 2nd through the 4th in Austin. Her artwork has been selected to be exhibited by the Texas Education Agency at this prestigious conference of 2015 in Austin. The exhibit includes pre-K through 12th grade artwork from across the state of Texas. And Emily Precure's pencil and charcoal drawing of Sydney is among those to be exhibited. Emily is an Art three student at Muleshoe High School of Sandy Chitwood. Congratulations to you, Emily Precure. The regional choir auditions will be held on Friday at Lubbock High School. Good luck to all of our MHS choir students. Donald Phelps of Muleshoe and Jerry Hicks of Lubbock, formerly of Muleshoe, will both leave Thursday morning on the South Plains Honor Flight for Veterans to Washington, D.C. out of Lubbock. They will be honored Wednesday night at a banquet before spending the next three days in Washington visiting the, sta the National Capitol, Arlington Cemetery, and many other monuments in our nation's capital city. The trip is offered free to veterans. Wednesday night at the banquet in Lubbock, Donald Phelps will be escorted to the banquet by his grandson and his wife, Jaron and Trish Phelps, who live in Lubbock, and also by his great-grandson, Dylan Phelps. And, of course, Jerry Hicks will be accompanied to the banquet on Wednesday evening in Lubbock before they leave on Thursday morning by his wife, Mary and, of course, she formerly lived here in Muleshoe and was reared here, the farmer Mary Surratt. Jerry Hicks was a fighter pilot for our United States Air Force, and Donald Phelps served in the U.S. Army and was stationed in Korea one year of his service. We know both Donald Phelps and Jerry Hicks and the other men and women will have a wonderful time in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. for three days this week. We'll be back with more Mule Train news and announcement, and we'll tell you about the Lions Club charter members and a lot of sports news. Stay tuned. Show your school spirit now with the first bank school spirit MasterCard debit cards available for the Mule She Mules, Demet Bobcats, and Bovina Mustangs now at the first bank, 202 South 1st Street, 806 272 Four five one five. Show your team spirit and earn cash for your school every time you swipe your card with the new Mule She Mules, Demet Bobcats, or Bovina Mustang School Spirit Mastercard debit card available now at the First Bank, two hundred two South First Street, eight hundred six two seven two four five one five. The First Bank is member FDIC. And this edition of the Mule Train News is brought to you today by the First Bank, along with Leal's Mexican Restaurant. Do you have family in town? Well, if you do. Come to Liao's, where families come together. Liao's is a family business that started in Muleshoe. They are located at 1010 West American Boulevard and serve the best of Mexican food and other treats. See you at Liao's. That's where my family goes when we are in town. 
All families are invited to the Muleshoe ISD Title I Family Program, Family Vision for Success, presented by Keith Davis. Keith Davis was a linebacker for the USC Trojans and the New York Giants. He'll be right here in Muleshoe speaking at the Muleshoe High School Auditorium Tuesday, October the 6th from 6 until 8 p.m. Child care will be provided. Everything is free. Translators will also be available and snacks will be at this for all families meeting family vision for success presented by keith davis by the misd title one family program 6 until 8 p.m tuesday october the 6th at the muleshoe high school auditorium all families are welcome and everything is free the officers of the newly chartered Muleshoe Lions Club are President Justin Brown, First Vice President Albert Daniel, Second Vice President Gary Shipman, Secretary Jamie Saylor, Treasurer Jimmy K. Moore, Tail Twister Scott Miller, Line Tamer Letitia Mendoza, Second our two-year directors are Tim McCormick and Troy Tuttle, Nuttle, pardon me, and one-year directors are Lynn Moore and Mark Washington. Membership chairman is Johnny Cruz, and the Lubbock Red Bud Lions Club was the sponsoring organization of organizing a Lions Club in Milshoe. Of course, many of us will remember the Lions Club for many, many years was very active here in our community. I remember Sam Fox and Charles Leno were some of the charter members of the original Lions Club in Milshoe. The charter members of the new Milshoe Lions Club, Justin Brown, Johnny Cruz, Mike Dale, Albert Daniel, Dieter Isaacson, Larry Curry, Glenn Kalick, Tim McCormick, Letitia Mendoza, Scott Miller, Jimmy K. Moore, George Barone, Lynn Moore, Troy Nuttall, Chris Phillips, Jamie Saylor, Gary and Todd Shipman, Camilo Torres, Rene Valley, and Arvaye, and Mark Washington and Tommy St. Clair. Good luck to the Muleshoe Lions Club that was recently chartered in our community. And the high in Muleshoe on Monday was 87 and the low was 51, and that's the lowest it's been so far this fall. On Tuesday morning at 7 o'clock, it was 53 degrees here in Muleshoe. And now, Five Area Telephone West Plains Telecommunications brings you the weather forecast for Muleshoe, Amherst, Earth, Sudan, and our entire vicinity five area telephone west plains telecommunications located right here in milshoe at 302 uvalde street 806-272-5533 offering phone internet and home automation coming very soon to five area telephone you can check them out online at www.5area.com Dot com. Looking at our weather forecast here for the Muleshoe area, sunny with a high near 88 degrees today on Tuesday for the Muleshoe area. South wind around 5 miles per hour. Partly cloudy with a low around 57 tonight. East southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Mostly sunny on Wednesday, high near 86 degrees. South winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then Wednesday night, partly cloudy, low around 56. Sunny on Thursday, high near 88 degrees. Mostly clear Thursday night, low around 57 Sunny on Friday, high near 88 degrees. South winds 10 to 20 miles per hour, then partly cloudy on Friday, low around 58. Beginning our weekend, we do have a chance of showers and thunderstorms on Saturday, mostly sunny, high, uh, a little bit cooler, around 74 degrees. A slight chance of uh, showers and thunderstorms on Saturday night, mostly cloudy, low around 50. So a broken record mainly for the week. 
uh, this week, highs in the upper 80s, lows in the mid to upper 50s. Then on Saturday, cooler, high near 74, chance of rain with a low around 50 on Saturday. Five Area Telephone, West Plains Telecommunications has presented to you this edition of the Weather Forecast. The Lubbock Avalanche Journal named Danny Campus quarterback of the Mule Shoe Mules to the Lone Star Varsity Players of the Week. And congratulations to you, Danny, a senior at MHS, six foot two inches and 175 pounds. Danny Campus passed for 432 yards and seven touchdowns in the Mules 58 to seven victory over Kermit last Friday night in Kermit, improving the Mules record for to one on our season. The senior quarterback had seven touchdowns go for more than 40 yards, with his longest being a 77 yard touchdown pass to Bryce Mauricio. Now, the Muleshoe Athletic Booster Club named the players of the Kermit Muleshoe game offensively Bryce Marusio, defensively Aaron Ross, most valuable player Danny Campus, lineman Dominique Hasley. Slobber Knocker Award went to Josh Lopez for last Friday night's game and special teams Jesse Easley and Evan Paez. This week, the Muleshoe Mills have an open date, and then they will open in uh, a week from Friday night their district play and host River Road here at Benny Douglas Football Stadium. Last week was homecoming at Farwell High School for the Steers, and Reagan A.G. was one of the candidates for homecoming queen in the court at Farwell High School. Congratulations to you, Reagan A.G. I know that put a smile on Sharon A.G. of Mule Shoes' face. Now, there will not be any games here in Muleshoe this week, but the Watson Junior High School teams will be traveling to Abernathy on Thursday night. And the first game will be the seventh grade at five o'clock. And then between the seventh and eighth grade games will be a scrimmage for the B team. At 6.30, the eighth grade team will be playing the Abernathy Antelopes there Thursday night. In more sports, the JV girls of Muleshoe High School placed eighth out of 14 teams last Saturday at the Amarilla Rebel Run. And Ricarda Elizaldi led the JV team with a 45th place finish running 16 28. There were 214 girls in that race. Helping Ricarda Elizaldi was with the eighth place finish for the Lady Mills were Regina Regalado, Satili Vargas, Kendall Miller, Ab Mendoza, Sophie Reina, and Lily. Barrera. The JV boys place 11th out of 16 teams. Freshman Jose Nava place 32nd out of 149 runners, running a time of 1941 in Amarillo. Other members of the Mills JV boys team were Jesse Lee Al. Malachi Rodriguez, Kevin Gonzalez, and Fabian Valdez. The Varsity Lady Mules 
placed fourth out of 16 teams last Saturday. Three freshman girls led the way for the Lady Mills, according to their coach, Edie Niblett. They are Liliana Martinez, who ran a 14.01, placing six. Alyssa Wheeler ran a 14.40, placing 13th. And Delaney Martinez ran a 14.49, placing 19th. Other members of the team helping with a fourth-place finish were Jasmine Garza, Maria Ruvalacaba, Jennifer Cervantes, and Brianna Barone. There were 114 runners in the varsity girls race. The varsity mules placed 11th out of 18 teams with 132 runners. Evan Paez led the mules placing 31st with a time of 18-16. Other members of the varsity mules team this week were Eduardo Panjota and Jacob Kettner, Eddie Elizalde, Coleman Preston, and Rahino Sanchez. And Mrs. Niblett says that she felt like the Mule Shoe Mules and Lady Mules did so well. And she is also very proud that they almost have all the runners that started at the first of this school year. Saturday, the Mills and Lady Mills will all be traveling on Saturday morning to run at sundown. State Representative Ken King will be in Muleshoe for a town hall meeting on Wednesday, October the 7th from 9 to 10. Also, Kel Seliger, State Senator, will be here on Tuesday, October the 13th in the afternoon from 1.30 to 2.30. And both of these town hall meetings will be held in the Muleshoe State Bank Community Room. The Muleshoe High School Senior Class will serve a pre-game chili dog dinner before the Muleshoe River Road game on Friday night, October the 9th in the Commons area of Muleshoe High School. And they have now on sale the tickets. They are $6. Serving time will be 5 to 7, and you can call for free deliveries at no extra charge between 4.30 and 6.30 on October the 9th. And the number to call will be 806. Six two seven two seven three oh five. All seniors, their parents, and their sponsors now are selling the tickets, or you can buy tickets at the door. They appreciate your support. They will be serving two grilled chili dogs with homemade chili and all the fixings with baked beans, chips, dessert and tea that's october the 4th before uh, pardon me october the 9th before the mule shoe and river road first district game of the season here at home you can also get tickets now for the taste tour benefit for Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for $50 per person. It will be held this Friday night, 7 to 11, at the Stone Creek Event Center in Lubbock. That is located three miles north of 4th Street on Milwaukee. And also, you can contact Amanda Messenger Shelton at Amanda Shelton at gmail.com if you would like to sponsor a table. All proceeds will benefit 
West Texans affected by cystic fibrosis, and that does include families right here in the Milshoe area. This will be Friday evening, uh, an evening of fine dining, wine tasting, live and salad auction, and they will have a live band that evening. Amanda Messenger Shelton will share her experiences. Her son, Jacob Shelton, has cystic fibrosis, and there will be others who also share their experiences as a patient of cystic fibrosis. I know Jay and Sally Messenger will be happy to share their experiences with you or help you get tickets, but tickets will be also available at the door. We'll be back with more Mule Train in just a jiffy. Make sure to see our Meet Your Neighbor program for September brought to you by United Supermarkets. It's Sunday evening supermoon lunar eclipse that occurred and we filmed it out at the Muleshoe National Wildlife Refuge. The last supermoon lunar eclipse was in 1982. The next one will be in 2033 and you can see our video of the supermoon lunar eclipse on the front page of our website MuleshoeTV.com today. Also rotating on Reach Broadband Channel 6 brought to you by United Supermarkets. Muleshoe native Jerry Veach says he his work is guaranteed. He's your hometown roofing company and been in business for well over 30 years. Call Jerry Veach today, 806-293-5617. He does residential, commercial roofing, composition, built-up cedar, tile, metal, and decor. He'll give you a free estimate, and again, his work is guaranteed. Jerry Veach at your hometown roofing company, Veach Roofing, 806-293-5617. K&K Pharmacy right here in Muleshoe at 1411 West American Boulevard, 806-272-7511. They've got a, several events coming up in October, like the Breast Cancer Awareness Pink Out Walk for a Cause will be Friday, October the 9th from 4 until 5 p.m. at K&K Pharmacy in their parking lot. All proceeds will go to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Also, they'll have a drive through flu shot clinic on Wednesday, October the 14th, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m., $20 cash for fast service in their parking lot or drive through window. Stop by the 10 in the parking lot or their drive through window. They will run your insurance upon request. That's $20 drive through flu shot clinic Wednesday, October the 14th, 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. at K&K Pharmacy. They'll be handed out... They'll be holding their annual Spooktacular Costume Contest on Friday, October the 30th from 3 until 6 p.m. The winner of the costume contest will receive a spine-chilling, blood-curling, hair-raising basket of goodies. Everyone is welcome. No age limit at K&K Pharmacy, 1411 West American Boulevard, 806-272-7511, right here in Muleshoe. This is Homecoming Week at Last Buddy High School, and they're having many wonderful activities out there. We received such a nice letter from the Bobby Reynolds family. It said, and I quote, the members of the Bobby Reynolds family think it is wonderful how you do not charge to run a death notice. You don't know how much that helped us. You have always done a wonderful job, and Bobby Reynolds enjoyed watching your programs daily on Channel 6. Thank you so much to the Reynolds family for taking the time to let us know that you appreciate us in running the obituaries absolutely free. And that is for everyone. In our bargain basement for sale, two aluminum storm doors. They're 32-inch width. Both are in good condition. Call Jinx Myers at home, 806-272-3424, or his cell phone is 806 
1-800-893-4057. That's for sale. Two aluminum storm doors, 32-inch width, both in good condition. Call 806-272-3424. Jinx Myers at home or his cell, 806 806- Eight nine three four zero five seven. We're so glad to report that the steak dinner held in honor of Reed Markle on last Saturday night was very, very successful. And the Markle family want to thank everyone who participated in every way. Little Reed Markle is in the Metroplex now at Children's Hospital in Dallas where he is being treated for cancer. Reed is the son of Ryan and Morgan Markle of Muleshoe and he is just a year old. He is also the grandson of Miss Miss David Markle and Mr. Miss Terry Burton, all of Muleshoe. His great grandparents who live here are Alton and Alma Burton, also of Muleshoe. Continue to remember Reed Markle and his family all in your prayers. And also little two-year-old Eliza Dodd of Pertalis. She was in Fort Worth to go to see her doctor. And she became very ill and was taken to the emergency room of Cook's Children's Hospital there in Fort Worth. Her mother is the former Jana Foster, who is a Milshu High School graduate, and her grandmother also taught here in Milshu for many years, the former Jane Foster. Please remember little Eliza Dodd and all of her family in your prayers, please. Linda White of Farwell, formerly of Milshew, will be going back to Houston in two weeks for very strong radiation treatments for cancer. Please remember Linda White and all of her family in your prayers. And Juan Torres, 57, of Donna, formerly of Last Buddy, who had an aneurysm and had surgery. He is in very grave condition, a According to Virginia Estrada of Milshew. Remember Juan, Torres, his wife Irma, and their family in your prayers. Warren Gibbons is home from the hospital in Plainview, but continue to remember him on your prayer list. And Carlene Stroud, Betty Noble, John Harris. Ivan Noble's mother, Ollie Mae Clawson of South Bailey County, and her brothers-in-law and sisters, Bernie and uh, Brenda Brown and Alan and Barbara Jones, all need to be in our prayers. The family of Sybil and L.J. Welch of Earth and the family of Bobby Reynolds of Milshew and you can leave a memorial contribution at the Milshu State Bank for the benefit the Bobby Reynolds family. Also, the family of Jana Brown Finke remains in our prayers. At the Milshu Area Medical Center, they are so happy to be of service here in this Muleshoe community and area. And you will be happy that we have a local hospital also. The doctors and also the nurses and all of the staff are your neighbors serving you and medical care here in Milshu at 708 South First Street through the Milshu Area Medical Center. It always is so hard to go 70 or more miles to have medical treatment. But right here, you can go a few blocks or a few miles and find the Milshu Area Medical Center 
and the staff is ready to serve you at 708 South 1st Street. Call 806-272-4524. It is just about time for us to go now on this edition of the Mule Train News brought to you today by the First Bake and Leal's Mexican Restaurant. You can hear our latest Mule Train News program rotating always on Reach Broadband Channel 6 as well as find our last several months worth of Mule Train News programs archived free of charge on demand. Anytime you want to listen to them, go to MuleshoeTV.com. Click on the Mule Train News link at the top center of the page. This is Tumbleweed Smith. Burning Prickly Pear in South Texas. Details in a moment on the Sound of Texas. And the Sounds of Texas are brought to you here on Reach Broadband Channel 6 as well as MuleshoeTV.com by Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association with offices in Muleshoe as well as in Morton. They're celebrating over 76 years of rural electrification right here in the Muleshoe area through Bailey County Electric. Their employees have 621 years and 7 months of work experience and you can check them out online bcecoop.com Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association, all the board of directors members the employee the manage employees manager ceo david markle hope that you enjoyed this sounds of texas with tumbleweed smith dub allen of Catula has worked as a ranch foreman 25 years once he saw a rattlesnake bite a cow snake bit her right in the side of the neck and she didn't take five steps she dropped a grown animal that snake was about the size of a quart fruit jar about five and a half foot long he says prickly pear is good cattle food Cowboys burn the spines off using propane tanks, hoses, and a nozzle that looks like a cowbell. Used to, they had small canisters that they carried on their shoulder. Now, in later years, a lot of them have went, they have, uh, like tractors are rigged up with multiple burners. There'll be five or six burners on a boom where they can burn a lot of power in a hurry, carry a large tank on it. You don't have to refill it so often your burners on the end of it and you string your hose out across the pair and you burn back to your pickup or back to your tank. If you got in a pickup or hooked onto a pickup or onto a tractor or whatever, you burn back to that tank. Well, by the time you string 100, 150 foot of hose out and burn back, you fed lots of cattle. He has burned tons of pear. Cattle are addicted to it. They get addicted to it. In bad weather, it can be lush. You can have a lot of grass, you can have a lot of forage on the ground, but if a norther comes in in a free, cold, bad, rainy, drizzly weather, you will see your cows if they've ever been fed pear before. And a lot of cattle have never been fed pear. When it gets bad weather, they'll go to eating raw pear. Stickers and all. Their mouths get so sore then they can't eat. I know I've told people in this country that back when I was a kid growing up up there at home, we could have grass on the ranch waist deep. First day of November, we started burning pear. We burnt pear every winter regardless. It made no difference how much grass we had. We burnt pear every winter. Cattle needed that pear. Pear is very high in calcium. This is something a lot of people don't know. Very high in calcium. One thing you don't want to do is put a bunch of young, heavy springing pregnant heifers on prickly pear. Because you'll have to pull every calf and you'll lose a good portion of them and you'll lose a few of your heifers because it's, it's high calcium, it builds bone, builds structure, even though it's 87% water. Dub Allen of Catula. I'm Tumbleweed Smith with the Sound of Texas. Time now for the market report brought to you today by Stephen Dement, financial advisor with Edward Jones, located right here in Muleshoe at 104 West 2nd Street. Call 806-272-4102. Speak with Stephen or branch office administrator Dana Rimpey. The market report was recorded this Tuesday, September the 29th, 2015 at 12 noon. U.S. stocks are edging higher after data showed a consumer confidence unexpectedly improved in September despite renewed concern about the health of the global economy. A separate report showed home prices in 20 U.S. cities rose 5% in July from the same month in 2014. Propelled by improving demand and limited supply, U.S. bond prices are slightly higher to begin the day. The best performing sector in the S&P 500 is health care, while the worst performing sector is utilities. Overall market indexes include the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 
71.22 to 16,073.11. The Standard & Poor's 500 index is up 6.93 to 1,888.70. And the NASDAQ Composite Index is up 35.36 to 4,579.33. So far today... This morning on the New York Stock Exchange, volume is moderate with 239.90 million shares traded. Advancers are outnumbering decliners by roughly 3 to 2 margin. The spot price of gold is down 38 cents to $1,131.60 in commodity markets. The spot price of silver is up 12 cents to $14.72. Crude oil prices are up 90 cents to $45.33. Bond markets, the 30-year Treasury yield is currently 2.88%, and the 10-year Treasury yield is 2.09%. Some stocks of area interest, Walmart Stores Incorporated is down 0 0.20 to 63.46. Pfizer Incorporated is up 0.18 to 31. Apple Incorporated is down 2.25 to 110.19. XL Energy Incorporated is up 0.01 to 34.65. The market report has been brought to you today by Stephen Dement, financial advisor with Edward Jones, member SIPC right here in his office, 104 West 2nd Street, 806-272-4102. For more market information, look at his website, www.edwardjones.com.